the remnants of Earth hung suspended in the void, a stark reminder that the Galactic Council had fucked humanity over one last brutal time. Captain Lyra Kerrigan slammed her fist down on the console of her ship, the Reclaimer, orbiting what used to be home. Three thousand years, she muttered, her voice laced with venom and resolve. Three thousand years and not even the gods could stop us from coming back to settle the score. Her first mate, eyes wide with anticipation, leaned closer, matching her intensity. Are the others in position? Lyra's lips curled into a fierce grin. Oh, they're ready. Let's light this up and show those bastards what happens when you try to wipe us off the map. Engage the cloak and set a course for the council's stronghold. It's time for some payback. On Earth's final day, the skies burned. As dawn broke, no one suspected it would be the last sunrise the planet would ever see. Mothers prepared breakfast, children laughed on their way to school, and the usual hustle of life thrummed through the cities. Above, the silence of space betrayed no hints of the catastrophe that was about to descend. Without warning, the heavens split open. A fleet, vast and ominous, blotted out the sun, casting long shadows over the landscape. The Galactic Council, in their merciless judgment, had deemed humanity a threat too great to leave unchecked. The assault began with a deafening roar as beams of energy rained down, tearing through buildings and setting the world aflame. The destruction was methodical, calculated. Major cities vaporized within moments, leaving nothing but shadows etched into the ground. Forests became ash under the relentless barrage, oceans boiled, and the air thickened with smoke and the screams of the dying. From afar, the council watched, their cold indifference more chilling than the icy vacuum of space. In those final hours, Earth's defenders rallied a desperate last stand ship's barely space-worthy shot into the orbit in a futile attempt to intercept the attackers. On the ground, people of all nations united, not in celebration of their differences, but in the shared grief of their impending annihilation. As the last vestiges of resistance crumbled, Earth's history, its achievements and dreams, were reduced to cosmic dust. Yet, as the planet's final echoes drifted into the silence of the destroyed biosphere, a legend was born among the scattered survivors. Whispered in the hushed tones of refugees and encoded in the data banks of escaping ships, the legend spoke of a prophecy. The descendants of Earth would one day return to reclaim their home, to restore what was lost and fulfill the promise of a world taken too soon. In the dim light of a distant outpost on the edge of the Andromeda Galaxy, Captain Lyra Kerrigan stood before the ancient artifact that had ignited the flames of retribution in the hearts of humanity. The relic, a tarnished bronze plaque engraved with the coordinates of Earth, was more than a piece of history. It was a summons, a call to arms that had traversed the void of space and time. Lyra ran her fingers over the cool metal, the engraved numbers a stark reminder of their origin and their loss. Three thousand years, she whispered, her voice thick with resolve. Three thousand years, and today we answer the call. Around her, the crew of the Reclaimer prepared for the journey back to the Milky Way. The air was charged with a mix of apprehension and fierce determination. Engineers calibrated the engines, while soldiers checked their weapons, each movement precise and purposeful. We're really going through with this, huh? Muttered Dex, her first mate, as he approached her side. His gaze lingered on the plaque, his expression hardening. I can't believe we're heading into the viper's nest. Lyra turned, her eyes steely. It's our right, Dex. They took everything from us their debts overdue, and we're here to collect. The preparations continued at a frenetic pace. Lyra oversaw the loading of the last of their supplies, her mind racing with strategies and contingencies. Every scenario had been meticulously planned, from stealth insertions to full-scale assaults. The Reclaimer was not just a ship, it was an Avenger, crafted from the remnants of a dozen scrapped fleets, stealthy and deadly. As the final checks were completed, Lyra addressed her crew in the hangar, her voice echoing off the metal walls. Today, we set course for the Milky Way. Not just as survivors, but as reclaimers of our destiny. The Council thinks they've seen the last of us. They think wrong. We're going to show them what happens when you corner a wounded animal. 
cheers broke out among the crew, their morale boosted by her fiery words. They were ready, each person united by a common goal vengeance for Earth, and a reclaiming of their stolen future. Lyra returned to the bridge, the weight of leadership resting firmly on her shoulders. She plotted their course to the Milky Way, each coordinate a step closer to their ancestral home and the looming confrontation. As the reclaimer powered up, ready to tear through the fabric of space, Lyra took one last look at the plaque, then secured it in her quarters. This relic would be returned to Earth, a symbol of their resilience and unyielding spirit. Engage the engines, Dex. Let's make those bastards regret the day they ever heard of Earth, she commanded, her voice a mix of ice and fire. With a silent nod, Dex initiated the launch sequence. The ship hummed to life, the powerful engines vibrating through the hull as they prepared to jump to hyperspace. The reclaimer cut through the void of space, its engines a dull roar against the backdrop of the cosmos. Captain Lyra Kerrigan stood on the bridge, her gaze fixed on the star-studded blackness ahead, her mind working through the battle plans that lay unfolded on the navigation table. We're approaching the first checkpoint, Dex announced, his eyes on the radar. Looks quiet, too quiet. Lyra nodded, her lips pressed into a thin line. Quiet or not, keep the cloaks on and sensors at max. I don't want any surprises. The Reclaimer was the spearhead of the Shadow Fleet, designed for stealth and equipped with the latest in cloaking technology. Its mission was clear, destabilize the Galactic Council's outer defenses before the main human forces arrived. Signal the others, Lyra ordered. It's time to light the first fire. Within minutes, the rest of the Shadow Fleet, a collection of similarly cloaked ships, converged on their position. They were a motley crew, but each ship was packed with the best tech humanity could salvage and invent. Their target was a massive communications hub orbiting a gas giant a nerve center for the Council's operations in this sector. On my mark, Lyra said, her voice steady over the comm system reaching every captain in the fleet. Three, two, one, execute. The fleet sprang into action. With precise coordination, the ships decloaked simultaneously, unleashing a barrage of EMP missiles at the hub. The missiles streaked across space, bright comets against the dark, before colliding with their target. The explosion was silent but brilliant, a flare of light followed by the immediate dimming of the station's lights. Direct hit, Dex confirmed, a grin breaking across his face. Communication lines are down. Lyra allowed herself a brief smile, then turned back to the console. Good. Move to phase two. Jam any distress signals. We can't afford to have company. As the fleet worked to establish a jamming perimeter, Lyra contacted the ground team, a special ops unit trained for this very moment. You're clear for insertion. Take control of the hub. I want their data and their security protocols. The ground team's acknowledgement was crisp and professional. Minutes later, they were on the station, moving with the precision of ghosts. The station's crew, caught off guard and still reeling from the EMP blast, offered little resistance. Meanwhile, Lyra monitored the operation from the reclaimer, her eyes never straying from the tactical display. Each member of her crew was silent knowing the gravity of their task. They were the first wave, the harbingers of the larger storm that would soon sweep across the galaxy. Captain, the ground team has secured the hub. They've got access to the council's files, Dex announced, breaking the tense silence. Patch me through, Lyra demanded. A moment later, a face appeared on the screen, Sergeant Eco, leader of the ground team, his face smeared with grease but eyes bright with victory. Captain, we've got it. And there's more here. Plans, fleet movements, defense protocols, it's a gold mine. Lyra's smile returned, fiercer this time. Excellent work, Sergeant. Begin transmission of the data, then scuttle the station. We leave nothing but ashes behind. The Galactic Council was in turmoil. News of the destruction of their communication hub had rippled through the galaxy, stirring unrest in its wake. On the reclaimer, Captain Lyra Kerrigan monitored the growing chaos, her crew's spirits buoyed by their recent success. Council scrambling, 
Dex reported, his eyes scanning the latest intelligence feeds. They're pulling fleets back to fortify the core worlds. Looks like we've got them scared. Lyra nodded, her gaze fixed on a holographic map displaying their next target. Scared enemies make mistakes. Let's keep pushing. What's the status on the local uprisings? Dex switched the display, showing various planets where small-scale rebellions had begun to erupt. The seeds we planted are sprouting. Several systems are using the blackout to coordinate strikes against council forces. They're using our tactics hit and run, staying under the radar. Lyra's lips twisted into a grim smile. Good. Make sure they have the support they need. Weapons, intel, anything to keep the council off balance. Turning away from the tactical displays, Lyra convened a briefing with her command team. The air in the room was charged, each officer ready with reports and recommendations. Next up is the fuel depot at Viridian Station, Lyra began, her finger tracing the route on the map. It's a key supply point for the Council's border fleets. We take that out, we choke their advance and fuel the rebellion further. Her chief strategist, Commander Mira, chimed in, the station is heavily guarded. We'll need a precise strike. I recommend using the Spectre Squad for this best cloaking tech we have. Lyra considered this, then nodded. Do it. And get the Phantom Wing in there for quick extraction. I want no traces left behind. As preparations for the new mission went underway, Lyra walked through the ship, her presence a calming force among the crew. She stopped by the communications room, where operators were broadcasting encrypted messages to their allies across the galaxy. Keep the lines open, she instructed. I want updates on the uprisings every hour. If any group is in over their head, we pull them out. Yes, Captain, a young operator replied, his eyes wide with determination. The assault on Viridian Station was a masterpiece of military precision. The Spectre Squad, under the cover of darkness, infiltrated the station, planting charges and sabotaging the fuel lines. As the last of the explosives were set, Lyra's voice crackled through their comms, execute exit strategy, now. Explosions rocked the station, flames lighting up the void as the Spectre Squad was extracted by the swift phantom wing. Within minutes, the once vital fuel depot was reduced to a burning husk, another blow to the Galactic Council's waning might. Back on the reclaimer, Lyra watched the destruction, her thoughts on the bigger picture. Each victory fed the growing fire of rebellion, and with every operation, her resolve hardened. Earth's memory was a constant echo in her mind, driving her forward, a relentless reminder of the stakes at play. Set course for the next target, she ordered, her voice resolute. And send a message to our allies. Tell them Viridian Station is down. Tell them it's time to move. Draconis Major was a fortress world, bristling with the Galactic Council's most formidable defenses. As the Shadow Fleet approached, hidden under the cloak of stealth technology, Captain Lyra Kerrigan scrutinized the holographic battle plans that illuminated the dimly lit war room aboard the Reclaimer. Draconis is the linchpin to the Council's defensive network in this sector, Lyra explained to her assembled command team. We punch through here, and the whole system crumbles. Dex, what's the status of their fleet? Dex, monitoring real-time data streams, replied without looking up from his console. Their ships are scattered, responding to feints we threw across their border. They won't make it back in time to stop what we've got planned. Lyra nodded, her expression taut with focus. Good. We hit hard and fast. Mira, are the ground teams ready? Commander Mira, standing firm with a data pad in hand, confirmed, Ground teams are green across the board. Sabotage units are particularly itchy to get going. They've been prepping for this kind of op their whole lives. Right, Lyra acknowledged, turning back to the battle map. We deploy the sabotage teams first. Their job is to disrupt the planetary shields long enough for our main forces to make landfall. We need those shields down, or this will be a short fight. The reclaimer shuddered slightly as it dropped out of hyperspace, the dark shape of Draconis Major looming ahead. Lyra's crew moved like a well-oiled machine, 
each member acutely aware of the stakes. Deploy stealth pods, Lyra commanded, her voice echoing slightly in the silent anticipation of the bridge. One by one, small crafts detached from the main hull of the reclaimer, slipping away into the blackness towards the planet. Inside one of these pods, Lieutenant Karen Nash felt the familiar thrill of battle tighten in her chest. She checked her gear for the umpteenth time, her team equally quiet, equally deadly. Back on the bridge, Lyra watched the progress of the pods on her screen. Mira, start the diversion. Let's light up their scanners and keep their eyes off Kara and her team. Mira nodded, issuing orders into her headset. Moments later, the outer rim of the Draconis system lit up with false signals and phantom fleet movements, drawing the attention of the planet's orbital defenses away from the real threat. The ruse worked. As the planet's defense forces scrambled to counter the non-existent threat, Kara's team breached the atmosphere and executed a high-velocity drop into the shield generator facility. Shield facility in sight, Kara reported through her helmet comm, her voice steady despite the blistering anti-aircraft fire lighting up the sky around them. Copy that, Lieutenant. You have the green light, Lyra responded, tracking their descent from orbit. Take down those shields. With precision honed by years of training, Kara and her team infiltrated the facility. A tense fifteen minutes passed before she finally broke the silence. Shields are down, Captain. Repeat, Draconis shields are down. Lyra punched the air, a rare show of emotion. All forces, this is it. Advance on Draconis Major. For Earth. The battle that ensued was fierce. Human troops poured onto the planet their advance covered by the guns of the Shadow Fleet now in orbit. Every soldier, every pilot fought not just with skill, but with a fire fueled by centuries of loss and anger. We keep going, she muttered to herself, turning back to the star map. We keep going until we're back on Earth. The ruins of Earth loomed large as the Shadow Fleet approached, a somber reminder of the lost world that once thrived. Earth, now a desolate battleground, was the final objective in Lyra Kerrigan's campaign of retribution and reclaiming. The Galactic Council had fortified Earth, knowing it would be the symbolic and strategic heart of the conflict. On the bridge of the Reclaimer, Lyra surveyed the battlefield with a hardened gaze. This is it, she declared to her crew. We take back our home today, or we die trying. All units, prepare for full assault. Dex, ever her right hand, nodded solemnly his hands flying over his console, coordinating the fleet's movements. All ships in position, Captain. Orbital defenses are stronger than anticipated, but we'll punch through. Lyra turned to address her battle-worn crew, her voice resolute and fierce. Listen up. Those bastards thought they could erase us from the universe. Today, we remind them who we are. Today, we show them that humanity isn't so easy to kill. We fight not just for revenge, but for the future of our species. For Earth. Cheers erupted throughout the ship, the energy palpable as fighters launched and troop transports prepared to descend through the atmosphere. The battle for Earth had begun. As the fleet engaged the orbital defenses, below on the surface, Lyra led a ground assault team. They landed under heavy fire, in a lush valley that had once been a vibrant metropolis. Now, it was just another battlefield, marred by craters and the scars of ancient warfare. Move out. Secure the perimeter and push forward to the rally point. Lyra commanded, her rifle in hand as she dashed from cover to cover. Explosions rocked the ground, and the air was thick with the smell of ozone and smoke. The ground team fought valiantly, advancing through the ruins. Every so often, Lyra paused to plant a beacon part of a network that would, when activated, form a defensive shield around the reclaimed territories. It was a new technology, one last surprise for the Council, and a symbol of Earth's rebirth. As they neared the Central Command Hub, a fortified bunker that was the source of the Council's control over Earth, resistance intensified. We're close. Push through, Lyra shouted, her voice hoarse as she lobbed a grenade into an enemy trench. Finally, they breached the command hub. Inside, 
they found not just enemy soldiers, but also enslaved beings from other worlds, forced to fight for the council. Lyra's heart clenched at the sight, but her resolve hardened. They would be freed another wrong to right. The war was not over there would be more battles, more bloodshed. But today, they had won a crucial victory. Today, earth was once again in human hands. We reclaim, we rebuild, we remember, Lyra said softly, her words a vow for the future as the sun set on a free earth for the first time in three thousand years. Years later, under a peaceful sky, leaders from across the galaxy gathered on earth, now a lush, reborn world. At a monumental ceremony, humanity, having spearheaded a new coalition dedicated to peace and cooperation, renamed Earth as Nova Terra, a beacon of hope and unity. This event marked the fulfillment of an age-old prophecy, steering the galaxy toward a brighter, shared future a true legacy of the stars.